This lesson deals with series resistors and the voltage divider row. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 2, starting at page 19. Circuit analysis can be made a lot easier if you can replace part of a circuit with an equivalent or a simpler circuit. Let me define what that is. Two circuits are said to be equivalent if they have the same voltage current equations as a specific pair of terminals. Also, two or more circuit elements are said to be in series if they share the same current. This will lead us to our first property with series elements. If I have k resistances connected in series, the equivalent resistance is the sum of the k resistances. Now showing that as a schematic, suppose that I have a circuit and I can pull out of it k resistances and they all share the same current. Again, they're in series. You can replace all of this by a single resistor, call R equivalent, whose value is the sum of the k resistances. Why is this true? So again, suppose you pull out these k resistances from the box. Suppose that this box has a voltage V sub S, then current has to come out of this box and come back because these resistors can only absorb power. So let's do Kirchhoff's voltage law. The current I sub S flows in R1, drop across R1 is I sub S times R1. The drop across R2 is also I sub S and now times R2. And that same current will flow through R sub K. And so we'll get a voltage I sub S times R of K. Pull out the I sub S and you have R1 through R sub K added together. And you could write that as a summation of R sub J one to K. Now let's call that summation R equivalent. And let's replace the yellow box with a single resistor whose value is R equivalent. The current I sub S flows in this circuit and the same current flows here, then the voltage V sub S is I sub S times R equivalent, and likewise I sub S times R1 plus R2 through R sub K. So we have the same results, therefore they're equivalent. They're equivalent at the terminals V sub S, in other words, terminals A and B. Inside the yellow box, there are two very different set of circuit elements, and the results internally are very different, but at these terminals, it stays the same. So this is an equivalent circuit to the original one, and it makes the circuit easier to analyze. There's also another property that uses series elements, and that's called the voltage divider rule. Let me just state it. If K resistances are connected in series, then the voltage across the jth element is equal to this voltage V sub S times the resistance of the jth element over the sum of all of the resistors. Now, why is this true? Well, again, let's take these K elements in series, and if a voltage V is applied, a current I sub S flows, and the voltage across the jth element is the series current I sub S times R sub J. Now the voltage V sub S is the sum of the voltages around the loop. We'll call those V1, V2, V sub J through V sub K. Now what are those equal to? Well, they're equal to I sub S times R1, I sub S times R2, all the way through I sub S times R of K. So we could solve for I sub S in terms of the resistances and V sub S. So let's do that. It's equal to V sub S over the sum of the K resistances. Now substitute that in for I sub S over here, and you get this expression times R sub J. And if we just interchange these two terms, you get the equation in our property. Now there's some special cases of the voltage divider that are handy to remember. The first one is just having two series resistances where you know the voltage across the series combination. This can be a voltage source or just a known voltage. Just using the theorem, the voltage across the resistor R1, which we'll call V1, is the resistance R1 over the sum of the resistances, R1 plus R2. And likewise, V2 is R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times the voltage V sub S. We could just say this in words, that the voltage across the resistance R1 shows up in the numerator divided by the sum of the resistances. If you had two equal resistances, you'd have R over R plus R, and the R's would drop out and you get a value of a half. So two equal resistors cut the voltage in half. This is real handy when you have a single power supply and you want to create other voltages that are smaller than their power supply. You can take this idea a little farther and do this with K resistances. If you had K resistances in series, the voltage across the Kth element would be the same as every other element. It would be that R over the sum of R K times. The R's drop out and you get one over K times the voltage V sub S, equal voltages across all the resistances. Let's do an example. Let's find the voltage V sub X in R equivalent in this series circuit. 24 volts, 100 ohms, 560, 330, and 220. So the voltage across the 330 is 330, that value of resistor, over the sum of the 1, 2, 3, 4 resistors times the voltage 24. 24 times 330, and the sum of this turns out to be 1,210. And it gives you a voltage of 6.55. What's R equivalent looking into these terminals? 
Well, it's just going to be equal to the series combination of 100, 560, 330, and 220, or 1.21K. So you could replace this by a single resistor and solve for the current coming out of the battery. You could then calculate the life of the battery. And these are some examples of series resistance and the voltage divider rule.